So let's see what happens to these field lines when we give this charge a kick. So we're going to give it a brief kick downwards and then let it coast downward at constant speed. So I'll just run this once. Okay, the charge is moving downwards now. And notice that there's this odd kink in the field line spreading out slowly as the charge moves downward. That's, it's not, that's where it was initially, and that's where it is now, and it's just coasting downward. Okay, let's see if we can understand what's going on there. So let's let it run for a moment, and then we'll, we'll stop time. Okay, so we're stopping time here. And let's think about what these field, line mean, field lines mean. To an observer here, not enough time has passed. And this observer here doesn't yet know that the charge has moved. So this observer is still detecting the electric field that the charge made when it was up here. On the other hand, observers at other locations closer to the charge have somewhat different information. If the observer is standing down here, this observer now sees an electric field pointing away from the current location of the charge because in the time the charge has been moving, with for information traveling at the speed of light, information that the field has changed has now got that far. So anybody inside this circle would now be seeing a field pointing from the current location of the charge. Well, there's the current location of the charge and the field pointing away from the current location of the charge. There's the field pointing away from the old location of the charge. And right there in between those two fields, traveling at the speed of light, there's a kink in the field lines. And that kink is actually in, this, in a very odd direction. It's not pointing away from the charge at all. In fact, it's, at this point, it's perpendicular to the R vector just about. So this kink is, is, the moving kink is moving at the speed of light here. And inside the region, inside the kink, observers see the electric field pointing away from the current location of the charge. And outside the region, they see it pointing away from the old location of the charge because they haven't got that information yet. And it is this kink this funny perpendicular electric field component, and I'm not showing magnetic fields here, but there are magnetic fields. This funny perpendicular component of the electric field that is the electromagnetic radiation. That's what we call the radiative electric field. It's in that direction. So what we're seeing here is, is two kinds of fields, the just plain ordinary static Coulomb field pointing away from the charge, and then this radiative field due to this brief acceleration spreading outward from the charge at the speed of light. And notice something sort of interesting about the geometry here. We, uh, we find a big effect in a location that's perpendicular to the acceleration. So we get this big radiative electric field. But if we're in line with the acceleration of this charge, we actually don't see a kink at all. The field just always points in the same direction. So this pulse of radiation seems to spread out in directions perpendicular to the acceleration. And, and, and the magnitude depends on the actual direction. There is a slightly, in 3D, this happens in 3D. We're only looking at it in 2D. So let's look at it in 3D and see what this looks like. Okay, here's our charge. We're going to give it a kick down. It's going to radiate. This vPython program shows you the electric and magnetic fields in the pulse spreading out in 3D. So here's the charge. That was its acceleration. We accelerated it briefly. And in 3D, we get these electric and this pulse of electric and magnetic fields spreading out from the charge. Let's just let's run it again. And uh, so 
We're going to accelerate it. Come on, we are going. There we go. And we see that it's it's the radiation spreading out in a 3D pattern, E perpendicular to B, and it's just going past us. We better back up a little bit. And it keeps spreading out and spreading out. It does fall off with distance. So as it gets farther and farther away, the magnitude of the fields decreases. But in fact, interestingly enough, the distance dependence is only a 1 over distance dependence. So it's a 1 over r distance dependence, not a 1 over r squared distance dependence. And so electromagnetic radiation always wins. If a charge gets accelerated and radiates, the, the pulse of radiation only falls off like 1 over distance, whereas the static field falls off like 1 over distance squared. So the radiation is what you're going to what you're going to notice the most if you're at any distance away. And notice one other thing about this. Let's, let's run it one more time. Notice one other thing about this. Notice that the radiation is strongest in, dis in directions perpendicular to the acceleration. And there's actually nothing at all right along the line. So if you're right along the line, you're not going to detect this radiation, whereas if you're perpendicular, you see a lot.